So there was a um, summer law competition to see who would start next to Javon and through two games. I believe Deshaun has played just about every game at the snap. Uh, what has he shown, um, you know, to merit that, and especially in these two games? Yeah, um, you know, for the most part, he's been consistent. You know, we've been looking for that partner opposite him and someone who can give Javon, you know, something to his game. Uh, so uh, Sean's been the one out there that's been communicating very well. Um, I think their partnership has been going good for these first two games. Um, obviously, we still have, you know, Brandon uh, getting him caught up to speed. But uh, uh, right now, Sean's been doing a really good job for us. When you have as many corners as you do, seven of them on the 53, how difficult is it to, to, to determine who's next man up? We asked Vic about Eli, his role. He said he's considering everything. It, with a limited number of snaps, how do you decide whether to go next to Perry, Camp Smith, Kelvin Joseph? Yeah, um, a lot of it can be matchups throughout the weekend, and a lot of it can be just performance based throughout the practices, like who's performing well that week, uh, who's picking up on the game plan, uh, things that we need to go out and execute. So uh, I think we look at it from all, all lenses to make sure that we're putting out the, the better matchups for our, our back end each week. Eli, Eli Apple and uh, Xavier Howard have had a few flags thrown on them the first couple of games. How concerning is that, and are they all legitimate uh, flags? Uh, they they called them, you know, so they're they're legitimate in my mind. And uh, as a coach, we got to just make sure that we're trying to correct those things out in practice, trying to play, you know, penalty free, move our feet, get in front of our guys, and. Uh, try to take it off the off the books because we know it's on the books for a while and they're going to be looking at it. So it's important for us to go out here and practice like how we want to play. So uh, that's the execution we're looking for uh, when we step out on the field today. It's always seemed like a unique skill to be able to play outside and inside corner like Cater has been able to. What is it you've seen maybe in his game, you know, elevating it in year two? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing, how we came in the spring, we, we coached all these guys to be multiple. and. Um, I think when you do that, uh, even if it's presented to you early, maybe if you're not getting a lot of reps, uh, it's still that, that recall that you're able to get. Uh, he knows what we're looking for on the outside lane. Uh, obviously, he has more experience inside, but um, he's just a football player at the end of the day, and uh, uh, that's what he does. He can he competes hard. Um, he's not going to let off the gas, and he's going to challenge everybody that he lines up against. I think for the most part, a lot of people, when they hear Justin Bethel's name, they think of him as a, as a special teams only guy. But, you know, dating back to last year, he was contributing on defense. What, um, you know, what do you see in his skill set that allows him to, you know, play slide and blitz and do a lot of different things? Yeah, uh, I, that goes back to just, you know, how we prepared this offseason as well. We knew he could do multiple things throughout his career. Uh, but if you're, uh, you know, the numbers are limited once, you know, the roster get cut down, we need everybody up. And, uh, He's one of those guys who've been in tune into every position since we've been here. Uh, so uh, asking good questions throughout the meeting. And he's been, been able to get a lot of lot more looks than some of the other guys have get uh, has gotten at those spots. Uh, and he's a trusted guy. You know, he's a trusted guy. We know he's when we put him in there at any position, he's going to go out there and do his job at a high level. Coach, this Denver offense has obviously hit a couple of big balls the last couple of games, and then their quarterback is capable of scrambling. How much of a challenge is it when you have to defend 40, 50 yards downfield, but also worry about a quarterback who can make plays with his legs? Yeah, I mean, um, we've got to rely on our front seven, you know, uh, to make sure that they're doing a good job of, you know, keeping a cup on, on, on Russ in the pocket. Uh, we've got to make sure that we're keeping the roof on the back end and making it difficult for those guys to find those shots downfield. Um, we know we try to do a good job of moving the coverage around, but at the same time, uh, they're going to find our ops, and uh, we got to be ready to answer the bell for when we do get those singled up matchups. But um, you know, we're going to try to do our our best to you know move the down and help guys out. But at the end of the day, we got to go out there and make plays when it, when it's our one on ones. How's Cam Smith doing in practice? He's progressing every day. Uh, you know, I, I like the way he's preparing. Um, you know, he's asking, sitting next to Jalen a lot in the meetings, so he's asking him good questions. And uh, I like the way he's he's preparing. Uh, you never know when your time's come, but I know the way he's preparing, he will be ready. Speaking of Jalen Ramsey, I don't know if you can comment on how he's doing physically, but from a mental standpoint, what is he still bringing to this room, even as he's been inactive for the past uh, what, month, two months now? Yeah, yeah he's, he's a leader, uh, and I, I don't think you know, regardless of the injury, you never stop uh, doing that. Um, obviously, he had a lot of experience going against Russ uh, during his time, so he's able to give that that feedback of just 
being in those shoes, playing in those situations, and uh, what what Russ Balls look like to like help those guys look like uh, look for when they're out there playing. So he's giving all his tidbits of his experiences, and uh, it's really helping our guys. Uh, those guys are receptive to it. They're asking good questions on the back end, uh, and he's just he's just been dialed in. He he wants to be out there. Uh, if you see him near the sideline, you can tell he's all in. Uh, but uh, uh, he's 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 just uh, a true leader, true leader in the room, and he's he's showcasing that uh, to our guys on the daily. Some I'm not bad for what are, I just saw you smile when you mentioned you know how badly he wants to play. Like, are there, is there a moment or two where you've just kind of observed him and you could tell like, damn, this guy wants to play? <laughs> uh, I, I think you just see him, just the excitement he has when guys are making plays. Uh, you know he wants to be out there. Uh, he's locked in. He's calling out their concepts. Uh, it's just a, he's just completely involved, regardless if he's not on the field physically. He's 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 there mentally and he's there in his action. So uh, we're we're seeing we're seeing all that, and he's giving those guys juice when they're out there. He's encouraging when they come to the sideline, telling them what he's seeing from his lens. He's he's involved in the game plan. He's sitting there every day, and he has his note cards, and he's making notes and. He's being able to apply it in his words to the players, which is which is really good. Uh, sometimes players are the best coaches in those situations. I don't want to, have to compare it to past players, but that seems pretty uncommon for a player who's not playing and injured to be that involved in meetings and being calling out concepts on the sideline. Is that pretty uncommon? Um, uh, a lot of times you see those guys maybe in the rehab, you know, position. Maybe they're not involved in much, but um, I think it's. I think as coaches, we encourage those guys to do it as much as possible. Um, but this one of them ones where you don't have to say much. He's he's up front with it, and and we like that as coaches because, like I said, it's letting them letting them know that he's still involved in this thing. He know he will be back, and uh, he's preparing himself for when he does come back so that he not missing a beat as far as the preparation goes. I know this could be game plan specific, but Javon has lined up in the box a lot more the first two weeks of the season than the previous defensive regime had him line up there. What are the skills that he has that can be maximized in the box room? Yeah, I just think Javon's an overall, you know, he's a, a very good football player. Uh, you can put him in any position, and I think he'll play at a high level. He'll succeed. Um, you know, he can play in the deep part of the field. He can come down and tackle and be physical. Uh, he's always tracking the ball for, for punch outs. Uh, he's a quarterback. So he's one of them guys where if you put him at a D tackle spot, he'll figure it out and, and get it done. He's just one of those type of players. Do you think Vic wants this one? Uh, it's hard for me to answer Vic, but, you know, uh, who, who wouldn't want it? You know, going to get your, your, you know, former team, you know, but, you know, he hasn't mentioned it. The only thing he's mentioned is about, you know, us can continue to grow as a defense and, and becoming better and trying to become just three and zero as a as a unit. You know, focusing on the, the small details we need to do in order to be a top defense in this league. So, those are the things that he's spoken about. Um, if you know Vic, that's probably not even his alley. Uh, so he's just encouraging us to. Uh, dial into our players, give them the details, coach them up, because um, we're looking at the the bigger plan, and that's you know to be playing late February in those situations, and uh, we got to continue to grow each week, and that's kind of been the focus from Vic Vic's line.